Alrighty, welcome back. Um, so I know I mentioned in the last video that the next video would involve putting everything together, but uh, thankfully, a couple of my viewers there in the last video commented and saved me from making some mistakes. Um, so thank you so much to Marlene uh, for flagging it and then to Jim for confirming as well. Uh, but the mistake that they're not the mistake, but the thing that they caught was there's a service bulletin uh, for the elevator stop here, which I had made. A service bulletin from 2018 uh, that basically says that this may not be sufficient and you may need a, a larger piece of material to prevent um, the actual horn from binding up against it. I guess there were some changes that were made um, to the elevator horn that could cause it to jam up um, with this part. So there's a service bulletin from 2018 uh, that addresses that and has you use a different piece of material, makes the piece longer uh, with my understanding is that way it contacts a certain part of the horn, the, the, the part of the horn of the flange. Anyways, prevents chaos from ensuing. Um, so thank you both so much, or thank you for Marlene for flagging it and Jim for, uh, for confirming. Uh, but it is true. There is a service bulletin from 2018 um, that is not addressed in the 2021 plans that I received, or I received this at the beginning of last year. Um, so I contacted, just kind of curious, because my thought pattern uh, with this whole thing was, if I had a set of plans from 2021, I assumed that it would address any previous service bulletins uh, from years prior, and they would just kind of take this part here, take this section, clear it out, add in the new piece of material, new dimensions, and not have you create a possibly ineffective part. Turned out that was not the case. Uh, when I spoke with Van's builder support, uh, he did confirm that this is a still true service bulletin. It says right on it that it's effective for all Vans RV-10 aircraft kits purchased after April of 2012. Um, so I was kind of confused about the whole thing because I never received this bulletin in the kit. It didn't come with any of my documentation or anything. Um, so it kind of came down to them flagging it in my comments there. Yeah, so anyways, it's one of those things where uh, I could go forward possibly with keeping this part here. Um, but the risk I would run is after putting or bolting everything together, I could be one of the people who has an elevator horn that um, could possibly get, get wedged or lodged up against this here. Uh, so I wouldn't know until way later on, so we said just do it now, um, knock it out now before moving forward. So again, thank you both uh, who commented in the last video there uh, for saving me, probably saving quite a bit of time here. Um, when I was chatting with them on the phone, I mentioned that I didn't receive this bulletin here. Uh, and also mentioned that I didn't have the part for it. And he was actually able to uh, look up my builder number, looked at my packing slip on their end. Yeah, so anyways, I, he said I should have it in subkit number five, went over there uh, where subkit number five used to lay. And sure enough, I had this piece of material here. Uh, so Vans does include the proper piece of material for, uh, for the service bulletin, uh, but just they don't retroactively update the plans to use this piece here. Uh, so anyone else building out there, uh, you'll definitely want to stay on top of service bulletins. I'm going to probably spend uh, one of these days here, maybe some downtime, and just read all the previous service bulletins, uh, get up to date. Uh, could be good just for my overall understanding. I mean, that's kind of what they were getting at when I was talking on the phone with builder support. He mentioned that um, I should get pretty much intimately familiar with, uh, uh, with service bulletins of the past and really get a good understanding of what's gone on, what changes have been made. So yeah, just basically to keep an eye out uh, for any service bulletins that could have been missed by the plans here. Yeah, so the really weird thing with the whole thing is uh, I'd asked if they're going to make changes to the plans. That way, um, this, what seems like a common issue, uh, doesn't continue to be common. Because uh, I think it'd be, my understanding is it'd be pretty easy to change these plans out uh, and have the proper piece in this section here, uh, the proper piece of material be cut out and uh, and put in place, but he didn't make it seem like they'll be changing the plans. So any other builders out there, make sure to stay on top of it um, and don't almost run into issues like I just did. Yeah, so anyways, you'll notice that the measurements given here, um, or really there's a lack of measurements given here, uh, being that they only have two dimensions noted here. Uh, so inch and a quarter, uh, which is given, that's inch and a quarter there. And then we're also looking at one and 31, 30 seconds of an inch for that tongue portion that's gonna hang out of the front. So anyway, since I already made that first part and already mass drilled it to, uh, to that top portion over there, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, as my source of truth for measurements for everything except for this front tongue portion here on the Bolton. So the way I'm going to do that, just to keep things very simple and easy, 
um, is I already previously went ahead and lined this up on the miter saw just to see what kind of an angle I'd be looking at. Looks like about nine degrees will get me really right near uh, this angle here. So I'm gonna set that uh, miter saw up to nine degrees on each side. Go ahead and make a chop off of each side there. And then from there, what I'll be doing, uh, I'll cut the top portion down, that uh, three quarters of an inch line there. Uh, and then from there, I'll find the exact center line. So yeah, anyways, I'll use that center line that I'll draw on the center here to go ahead and line up this tongue portion here, as well as line up that very center hole. And then from there, I can go ahead and on that piece over there that's gonna be match drilled to, uh, go ahead and, and match drill the remainder of the holes uh, that are already existing on it from this one here. Uh, what I don't wanna do, and I thought of doing this, but it'd be totally wrong, uh, would be just to take this piece here and match drill it on the bottom. And the reason why that would possibly run into issues is if I wasn't 100% perfect when it came to these first holes, uh, then it's going to be the mirror image and that imperfectness is going to show up on the other side. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense, but I really want to make sure to match drill, not to this piece here, uh, but to that top piece there where it will live and, uh, and be friends for the rest of its life. Um, so yeah, anyways, we're just going to jump on into things here. Um, quit talking, get to building, and uh, see if we can make this part. All right, so see, I have this pretty much laid out here as I'm uh, ready to move forward. Uh, but summed up what I just did, cut the back portion there to three quarters of an inch. Um, this line here is that original line reference the 15, uh, 30 seconds of an inch uh, spacing, which is where these holes should line up and take place. Uh, from there, I went ahead and drew the center line, just taking the center of the, uh, the back piece here just to give myself a nice center line. And from there, went ahead and centered up this uh, front portion uh, measurement from the bulletin here of one and 31, 30 seconds of an inch. So centered that uh, in relation to this center line. Uh, then from there, uh, I had this measurement here that I had transferred over, uh, which is the original, original size of this, is the original width of the front portion here, uh, which is three quarters of an inch. So went ahead and just to make things easy, just lined it up on the back side. Drew my line across, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll cut these pieces here. So I mistakenly put the line on the top part. Well, I guess not mistakenly, it helped to get that center hole done, uh, but I'm gonna replicate this line here on the back side as well so that I'll be able to line up. Uh, that string of holes there. Alrighty, so I am really happy with how that part turned out there. Uh, turned out really well. I'm ready to move forward now back again with the process. Uh, but again, thank you so much to Marlene and Jim. Uh, Marlene for calling it out and then Jim also for clarifying. I think that's one of the great things about this whole builder community is everyone out there is uh, so willing to uh, step in, offer advice where needed. Uh, so anyway, super awesome to see. And again, thank you for saving that headache because that would have not been fun to do in the future match drilling while something is already fully assembled. Uh, so again, thank you both. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Adios.